Hi, welcome to this video. Rob and I wanted to talk about our experience of buying a motor home in New Zealand. Um, and this episode is all about the legal requirements. I'm sure there's people watching this who've got far more experience than us. And if they want to contribute to this video or pass a comment, they'd be very welcome. Thanks, Peg. I mean, we're looking to answer lots of questions, everything that you need to do to buy a motorhome in New Zealand, such as do you need a permanent address? Can you drive on a foreign driving licence? How to pay for your motorhome if you're coming from a foreign country? Um, best mobile apps to use, what it's like to drive in New Zealand, and much, much more. Great. So, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And we really look forward to seeing your comments too. So Rob, if somebody wanted to buy a motorhome in New Zealand, do they need to have a permanent address? That's a very good question. So yes, if you're buying a motorhome, you will need an address. Ideally, it would be a friend or it would be um, a family member. But if you haven't got one of those, then you can use a third party like privatebox.nz. So they do offer a service specifically for this type of um, situation where if you're buying a vehicle while you're in New Zealand then you can subscribe to them for a modest monthly fee and they will provide you with an address to use. Fantastic. So Rob, what kind of documentation do you need to fill in, like change of ownership? Yeah, so there is a change of ownership form when you buy a motorhome. Now if you're buying from a dealer they will do this for you and it's completely free of charge. You can do it yourself. So whether you're buying privately or from a dealer, it's $9. You can do it online, you can complete a form and send it in, or you can go into any AA office and they'll do it for you. It's very straightforward, um, no problem at all. But just bear in mind that you can't buy RUC, which is your road user charge, unless that document has been filled in in advance. So that's really important to make sure that's done, whether you're buying privately or through a dealer. Rego is another thing you need to be aware of. So what is a rego? So this is your vehicle license. Now you can buy this in three, six or nine month chunks um, and up to three and a half tonnes it costs around $200 a year. You also mentioned road user charge? Yeah the road user charge is for diesel vehicles and in New Zealand you have to pay for the mileage you do in advance. It's payable in a thousand kilometre units and you get a license that you put in the front of your windscreen. You can pay online or in an AA office and it's around $50 per thousand kilometres. Now until January 23 there is a 36% discount but from the 1st of Feb 23 it's going to go back to the standard rate. Okay, interesting. So Rob, I've heard about a WAF. What is a WAF? That's a very good question, Peg. Right, you've got a WAF and you've got a cough. WAF, WAF is warranty of fitness and cough is certified of fitness. And these are both stickers that you have to display in your windscreen. Now, the WAF is for vehicles, motorhomes in this case, up to 3.5 tonnes and a cough would be for any uh, motorhome above 3.5 tonnes. So for a WAF, you need to get an annual inspection once the vehicle is at least three years old or six months if it was registered before the 1st of January 2000. Now a cough, which is for vehicles above three and a half tonnes, then they need to be done every six months. So it's a bit like an MOT? It is a bit like a UK MOT. So darling, what's a self-containment certificate? Again Peg, I'm glad you asked that question. Right, a self-containment certificate is valid for 48 months once it's been issued and it shows that a vehicle can be lived in for three days without needing more water or dumping waste. You have to display a warrant card in the front of your windscreen to show that you've got a self-containment certificate. A lot of things in your windscreen. There's a lot, yes. So Rob, do you need any electric or gas certificates? Well it won't surprise you to hear that there are both electrical and gas safety certificates. Now the electrical EWAF sticker, which again you put in your windscreen, is required every four years by law for motorhomes with 230 volt connections and it's issued by an authorised installer or inspector and it confirms that your electrical installation is safe to use. As regards to gas, once the gas certificate has been issued you don't actually need ever to get it done again unless you're changing an appliance in your motorhome. So if you have a new fridge 
or if you have a new oven or hob then yes you would need a new gas certificate but otherwise you just keep the one that you got when you bought your motorhome. What about insurance and breakdown cover Rob? Well live from the bathroom I'm going to tell you that vehicle insurance actually isn't compulsory in New Zealand oh. but it is recommended. Now not all insurers will be interested in covering travellers to New Zealand but there are plenty that will do and I had no trouble getting insured through the AA and they could also provide breakdown cover at the same time so I opted to take that as well so that was really good. It's also worth mentioning that if you've got AA cover in your own country then it may be transferable to New Zealand. Now unfortunately it isn't for people from the UK maybe from other uh, countries in Europe it will be. But how can you be sure that a vehicle is safe? Well, there are several ways you can do that. There are a couple of apps online which you should start with first, which is CarJam and MotorWeb. Now these do basic checks for you on the vehicle you want to buy using the number plate. You can pay a small fee and get a more comprehensive check, which is very useful to see if it's been involved in any accidents, if any money's owing on the vehicle, and check its mileage and basic details like that. The AA can also provide a pre-purchase inspection of the vehicle which is advisable to do before you buy it. Rob, how do you go about paying such large sums of money? Right, so this was a concern when we bought our motorhome because when you're transferring a lot of money you want to make sure it doesn't go missing. So our bank wanted to charge us £850 just, just for the pleasure of transferring money from the UK to New Zealand. It was recommended to us to use WISE and we used it without any issues whatsoever. It's an online app and internet site. It's very easy to transfer money from your bank account to a third party. So we paid a dealer um, the money to buy our motorhome without any trouble but we've also paid people in foreign currencies as well and it worked flawlessly. Is my UK licence okay to drive here? Visitors to New Zealand can use their home licence for up to 12 months. So is there a best time to buy? Well probably February, March, April or May would be a good time in New Zealand because this is a lot quieter um, at that time of the year. But if you're buying in December which is going into the summer months and then going to try and sell in May you're probably going to expect to sell at a lower price than what you paid for it. Where would you advise people to buy from in New Zealand? Okay well there's a number of options. Um, Trade Me which is the same as eBay is a very good starting point. You've also got plenty of dealers to choose from especially around Auckland um, and also there are Facebook groups and vehicle fairs so there's a whole myriad of options to look at. Mm. What's it like driving in New Zealand? So you drive on the left in New Zealand and most roads are single carriageways with limited opportunity for passing. There are a number of gravel roads so it's not all tarmacked and also navigation's a lot easier because there are so few roads to go on. So I've heard about freedom camping in New Zealand, what's that? Well freedom camping, also called wild camping, means that you can stay overnight on public land um, that isn't a campground or a public park. Now freedom camping is permitted in New Zealand but there are regulations which are strictly enforced. So most freedom camping is limited to vehicles that are self-contained so just be aware of that and as I said earlier that's for vehicles that can go for three days without requiring fresh water or to dispose of their waste. Most dock campgrounds are free or there's a small charge and these are readily available throughout New Zealand. I've also heard about the NZMCA do you know what that is and, and whether it's worth bothering with? Yeah, I highly recommend the NZMCA. That's the New Zealand Motor Caravan Association. It's a membership organisation based around motorhome and caravan owners. And benefits include discounts on products and services. It also has free and low-cost overnight sites, which I highly recommend because they, they, they're basically around $5 a night or £2.50. And often you're getting all your services included in that. Not electric, but you'll get your water and, 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 and other essential supplies as you need. Mm, is that £2.50 per vehicle? It works out at about $5 per person or £2.50 per person. So if there's two of you, then that would be $10 or £5 a night. What about using apps? Are there any good apps to use in New Zealand? Yeah, I mean, the NZMCA have a very, very good app. So if you remember there, you definitely want to start with that. There are several other brilliant apps to use, such as Rankers, Wikicamps NZ, and Campermate. All are fantastic. 
they show all the different sites, whether they're free, paid for, campsites, where to get fresh water, where to empty the toilet. They're definitely well worth investing in. To summarise what we've just been talking about, the short answer is yes, but if you don't have a relative or a friend that you can use, then uh, you can use a third party like privatebox.nz. Change of ownership registration can be completed by a dealer for free of charge, but in the case of a private sale, both the buyer and the seller must complete the change of ownership registration within seven days. It's the vehicle licence and it can be paid for from 1 up to 12 months in advance. The road user charge is prepaying mileage on diesel vehicles which is about $50 per 1000 kilometres. The warrant of fitness annual inspection is required for vehicles above 3 years old and the certificate of fitness every 6 months. Self-containment shows that you can go three days without needing more water or a requirement to dump waste and it's valid for 48 months. The warrant of electrical fitness lasts for four years and the gas only needs to be redone if there's a change of a gas appliance. Insurance is not compulsory but it is recommended. CarJam and MotorWeb allow you to make an informed decision on the vehicle you're looking to buy by doing some background checks on the vehicle. It may be cheaper to use a specialist like Wise instead of using your bank. Visitors to New Zealand can use their home licence for up to 12 months. The best time of year to buy a motorhome or camper van is February, March, April or May. If you buy in December and sell in May, you may end up selling it for less than you paid for it in the first place. Trade me, dealers, Facebook groups and vehicle fairs. You drive on the left and there are many single lane and gravel roads. There's not many roads which makes navigation easier. Freedom camping is permitted in New Zealand, but there are many regulations about where you can and can't park for the night. The NZMCA is a membership organisation that is worth joining due to the benefits which includes access to low cost campgrounds and discounts on products and services. The best mobile apps to use in New Zealand are the NZMCA app, Rankers, Wikicamps New Zealand and Campermate. If you have any questions or suggestions please write them in the comments section below. And if you liked it, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Thank you.